Good afternoon. This is part seven of a multi-section webinar series on the LC mass spec unknown identifications using MSMS libraries. And this part is covered using and creating other MSMS libraries and really NIST search considers anything that's not a NIST commercial library as a user type library. So you have to convert it in some way to get it in the hybrid format in particular that will be searched within the NIST search. And this session will talk about that and how to create your own libraries, user libraries, how you go about that process. So I've already created a session on EI and unknown identification using the NIST libraries and the NIST search. But I feel like that the, the use of MSMS libraries is greatly underutilized compared to EI type searches, but I think it can be very valuable in unknown identification. So I wanted to go through the software thus that we could, I could encourage other people to take advantage of this powerful technique. With every one of the sessions that I created, there's a table of content, tents, and a very detailed handout that tells one how to use all of the things that I demonstrate in the video and more. So you really need to read this to actually do it. The video is just to give you an idea of some of the concepts. And of course, like I said, this is part of an eight part series that teaches you how to use the software, how to do structure searches, et cetera. So take a look at the other ones. I think they'll be very useful to you if you like to do unknown identification doing L using LCMS data. So let's start with the NIST search first. Uh, before you can actually use this software, you have to import the library that you want in the proper format. So I thought I would demonstrate that using one of the Mona databases. If you go out to their website, we'll go out there and look. There's a bunch of them. Really the ones that are most important that I think are the LC MSMS Spectra, this collection of 142,000 here. And possibly you could use the GCMS Spectra and download them and turn them into NIST libraries. But I've already done that for you. If you want to try them and don't want to go through this process on my website, I've created two NIST libraries of these two large collections here that you can download and put in your NIST search folder and give them a try and see if they're useful to you. But all that being said, I'll show you how to do a small one today because it takes too long to watch while we're sitting here. So I'll first have to download that library. So you're gonna download this Finn library 212 spectra. The MSP format only contains the spectra. The SDF contains the spectra and the structures in a format that NIST can convert. So I'll download that first. And it's downloaded it and you just put it wherever you want to. It's best to put it in the NIST search folder. So NIST 20 MS search. So I'll just save it there. I'll skip the next step. You have to go to that folder and unzip the file because it's actually in a zip folder. And so you have to unzip it to get the SDF file to show up at that level. So I've already done that. So I won't bother doing that in this example. And then you have to go open lib to NIST. I don't have it open yet, so let's just find it. Lib to NIST converter. And here's the, it's a utility that NIST makes for doing these conversions. And so I need to go find that file now, but you need to first set up the options and the options are in the handout. There's a lot of, anytime you do anything in NIST, you have to set up some options. So it's best you read the detailed material if you want to actually do this process, but I'll show you the basic ones. The most important one is this MSMS spectra only. If you try to bring it in one of the larger databases like the Mona database, it's 142,000. I think it only does around 50 something thousand. There's some upper number if you don't select this. So you need to make sure you do that to get it in the right format and allow you to convert larger databases. So you say, okay, don't want to change anything else. And then I have to go find the file. So I add the input library and here's the one I downloaded. That I unzip. Like I said, it didn't come this way. You have to go unzip it first, but after you unzip it, you just select it and say open, select it again to show that's what you plan on converting. Then you have to decide which format you want. NIST MS library is the format. It does a lot of different formats for doing other things, but that's the one we need for the binary format to actually work as a NIST hybrid library and just say convert.
And now if you go to your NIST search and look for that and set it up as a library, it will be there. So you just add it to your list and search. So it's not real difficult to do, but uh, you just have to get everything down to the right place. You have to get it in the right folder. You have to unzip it. And then you have to make sure it's in the right place when you put it back. If it's not in the right folder and you create it somewhere else, sometimes the NIST program will try to put an alias within the NIST 20 MS search folder. And that might confuse you. It's better if you get rid of that file with the alias in it and actually put the folder that has, I think, 45 to 55 files, the indices that it created in that file in the NIST 20 slash MS search folder so it can be used by the NIST search program. So that's, that's pretty much it. That's how you do a conversion. Uh, the next thing I want to show you is how to create your own user library. That's another big part of the handout. So I've imported the spectrum. Let's say I got it from Agilent or Thermo or, or some other manufacturer's data system program. And I showed you how to import in another session in the series. And I imported the spectrum. So we have this that we want to add. And we think we know what it is now. And we want to add it to our library. Uh, so the first thing you do is you have to go to the library and uh, folder down here. So let's go to the library and folder. That's where all the things are added in. So down at the bottom here, librarian, and you'll see the test here. The, before you edit it though, we do need a structure. So I need to back up a little bit and I'll go to my drawing program. And I've already put in the structure. I drew it one way or the other. And you have to select it. So select what you want, say edit, copy. Now it's in the clipboard. It's ready to go into the library editor. So you go over the library editor, you open it up and you say, edit. All right, here's our spectrum here. If you need to get rid of some of the masses, you can select them and you can use the control keys on your keyboard to select more than one if you want to, or, or the control or the shift key. But if you actually want to get rid of something, you select it and then there's no, there's an accept key if you want to add things here, but there's no delete key. So you have to use the delete key on your keyboard, on your actual keyboard and go uh, hit the delete key and it'll make the mass or masses go away. You can see it's a little sad, it doesn't have a structure, but we'll get a structure here. We'll bring it from the clipboard. And so that's the structure that we had in our clipboard. It pops in here. And what you wanna do is say, you wanna calculate the formula and the molecular weight from the structure. So it automatically does that for you. You can add any other information you want. You can also add additional information uh, such as a precursor ion if it didn't happen to have one. You just, if you want to add something here, you have to click on it once, click on it twice, and now it turns into a white box and you can put what you want and you say, okay. This one already has the precursor, which is good. This data system imported a lot of things that are useful. So there's not much to add in that regard. The other thing is when we add things to our library, we put a lot of comments in there about where things come from, et cetera. And usually we're doing a set of them. So there might be 10 or 15 things in a set that gets really tedious to have to type them in every time. So we always keep notepad open and you just type what you want in the notepad once and then you, you select it and right click and say copy, come back into your editor. And we're going to put this in as a comment. And there you go. And so you can put as many things as you want in there. You can also put in these other additional information things here. If you want to fields, if you're going to do the same one in every one, if you read the detailed text, it tells you how to paste those in too. So you don't have to type each one. If you type in the proper designator every time, but I won't show you that, but it's in the text if you want to do it. And then all you have to do, if you want to add this to the list, because you maybe want to look at it in MS interpreter, take a closer look at it before you add it to your library then add it to the list. But here we'll go just and add it directly to the library. And we'll add it to, uh, if you want to put in a new library, just type it, uh, let's say demo underscore test. If you had a current library, just select it and then add it to it. So we'll add this to this new library we're creating since this is our first spectrum. But the next time we would just select demo underscore test when we wanted to add spectrum two, three, four, et cetera. And that's pretty much it. The only thing you might have to do if you want to search that library right now is come over to tools and say update list of libraries so you can actually see that library because the library program 
when it opens decides what libraries are present to search. So if you add create a new library, it will not show up. Now, if you want to do a hybrid search of this particular database, you'll have to export it and bring it back in. So you export it as uh, SDF or MSP with mole files as described in my detailed text and bring it back in. Because that's the only, only way to create the hybrid loss indices you need to do the hybrid search. If you want to do the similarity search or the, uh, the one that's just matching the spectra, then it doesn't matter as much. But the hybrid has some special indices, so you have to create those. And when we were doing EI, you could re-index this EI hybrid search, but they um, currently do not have a similar command for indexing the MSMS hybrid searches. So that's uh, pretty much everything that I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you how to use the lib to NIST utility and I, so you could convert libraries into NIST format, hybrid format, so you could search for your say, if you had a, a current user library, you wanted to convert it into hybrid format, if you wanted to convert the Mona databases, or if you wanted to convert Wiley, the Wiley do not come with the hybrid indices needed to do a hybrid search, but you can use lib to NIST to bring them up to date with that regard also. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope you find this useful and it'll be a little bit more tedious than some of the other things that we've demonstrated in the other sessions. So it'll take a little study on your part to get up to, up to speed on this part. But I think if you can do it and create your own user libraries, we, we have a, about 55,000 our EI and MSMS, EI and MS, MS libraries at Eastman and they're invaluable to have your own personal libraries. So I highly encourage you to create your own as a way of archiving information that you don't have to find again by starting from scratch every time. Good luck.